I want you to imagine that the same technology that could be used to potentially cure cancer in our lifetime, saving the lives of potentially billions of people, that very same technology might also end up releasing a virus that might kill millions. I want you to imagine with me that that same technology that could be used to create a new energy source, a clean energy source that could transform the economics, the prosperity of the planet, that that very same technology could also end up crashing the stock market, destroying the wealth, the opportunity, and the prosperity of many billions. Now, I am excited about the possibilities of thinking machines, artificial intelligence. I'm excited about the possibilities of them being able to address some of the grand challenges, the global grand challenges that face our world, that quite frankly, we have not done such a good job in this modern era. We need to do better at dealing with issues of hunger, climate change, security, food, and certainly what's next for healthcare and medicine. If we could accelerate that by using and shaping the future of artificial intelligence, well, quite frankly, that might be one of the most important things in the history of our civilization. Well, I believe we're at that point right now. A choice point, a point where we need to be able to shape the future of thinking machines, shape the future of artificial intelligence, and, and be careful at the same time to make sure that thinking machines don't outthink us because there is a risk. It's a double-edged sword. I want to suggest to you as we look forward that there may be a great AI dividend, a prosperity dividend, which I put in my estimates at approximately $5 trillion of value that we could bring to the planet if we learn to shape AI and go after these grand challenges. Let me suggest to you that there will be two key technologies that will help us do this. So the two technologies that are emerging right now, and really I spent most of my time kind of looking ahead and looking what's in the lab today, what scientists are working on today to be able to therefore make proper, or let's say bold and sometimes wrong, but courageous ideas and forecasts of what may come. So there are two technologies that I'm looking at that I think the mashup of these two technologies could end up being the new framework, the computing framework that will accelerate artificial intelligence and give us true thinking machines. The first is neuromorphic computing. Neuromorphic computing, well, quite frankly, it's about using genetics, biology, and neuroscience as the model, the use and development of what we know today as neural networks. These really are uh, computer networks based on evolutionary computation or the way the brain works. In fact, we're beginning to create models that show the possibilities of that. Well, let me give you an idea where it could be. Neuromorphic computing, we could end up with Within 10 years or less, we could end up with 100 billion programmable neurons, which would replace the kind of logic gates we have today, and we could end up with 1 trillion synapses. Those are the connections between neurons that enable our communications and our brain to work. So the ability to harness the kind of neuromimetics to create this new kind of computer platform that wouldn't just be a thing in our phone or in our car and our habitat, but would live as a virtual entity, but yes, could get downloaded on demand, that could be within 10 years a reality. Now, the other technology that's important to, to envision is quantum computing. Quantum computing today is completely a different architecture than supercomputers, where we're harnessing bits today, zeros and ones, fairly primitive. Tomorrow, quantum computing will be 100 
million times faster. We could collapse 10,000 years into 10 minutes of programming. And the ability of quantum computers, the promise of quantum computers is to be able to deliver a capability that would be, well, quite frankly, harnessing hyperdimensions, harnessing time and space, not just bits. So this, this mashup of, of neuromorphic computing and quantum computing together, for me, represents a new framework. But as I said earlier, there are also risks. Now, one of the challenges about thinking machines, which goes to the heart of the issue for me, certainly is we need to be vigilant and careful about autonomy. Now, there's been a lot of talk about intelligence, the growth of intelligence, superintelligence, you know, when AIs will become smarter than and surpass human intelligence and become even an alien intelligence, if you will. What will be the implications for that? And, and somewhere along the line, we've, we, we've missed the opportunities to, to understand about autonomy. You know, we could end up having fully autonomous artificial intelligence, general artificial intelligence, strong artificial intelligence that could be, quite frankly, dumb. Is it possible we could have dumb AI? Yeah. What would dumb AI be, right? What, do we want to turn over you know, our, our healthcare system to dumb AI? Do we want to turn it over to utilities? How do, so we're going to have dumb AI for a long time until we have really smart AI. But the notion of autonomy, we need to learn to control AI before AI controls us. That's my thesis. Well, let's move forward. I want to suggest to you that there are a series of challenges, grand challenges, facing our planet. I'm going to outline a couple of them to give you an idea of where I think we should shape AI, direct AI, to be able to control the outcomes. First, as I said, you know, the grand challenge of managing food. We waste half the food we make. There's 800 million people on the planet today that are either malnourished or they are suffering from hunger. 300 million children a year die from not having the food they need. And when you really look at this problem, it's food distribution, it's logistics, it's transportation, it's refrigeration. Could we feed the world with AI to better reorganize this? Yes. You know, artificial intelligence is another word for kind of the future design science, the tool sets that we should be deploying to be able to go after these grand challenges. I believe in looking at these key problems regarding food distribution and moving from the field to the shop to the mouth, I think that we could apply artificial intelligence to managing these. Another great challenge before us is cognitive medicine, healthcare. Over a half a billion to a billion people a year do not have access to the healthcare they need. We're developing a new era right now. There's a hospital system I've been advising in Bangkok, uh, Bumram Grad, and they are now experimenting with cognitive science, looking at big data and analyzing, using the beginnings of machine intelligence to analyze patterns to be able to do better oncology diagnostics. This is just scratching the surface, but imagine 9 billion people by 2050, 9 billion cell phones, 9 billion AI docs creating personalized medicine to be able to give people capabilities that we could only possibly envision today. It seems almost impossible today. But then if this was 35 years ago and I was going to talk about having a supercomputer that you would wear or the, uh, a self-operating car that you wouldn't need an operator or even what's next for the internet, people would think I was crazy and really smoking something and enjoying it. Well, I believe that the era of preventive diagnostics, where we can actually understand disease and use artificial intelligence to be able to interdict and actually prevent illness, understand population health, and go after major diseases that are going to ravage our future, such as Alzheimer's, such as cancer, such as diabetes. I believe we have a destiny to be able to use artificial intelligence to shape this, but we've got to be careful. Now, there are also other scenarios, quite frankly, that represent risks that we need to pay attention to. Will we have potentially rogue AIs? I believe we will. I believe as more things get connected, more things will get hacked. 
I believe that we will have AI proliferation. I believe we will have AI wars. And the issues of managing artificial intelligence proliferation or having AI wars will be something that will be something we'll have to deal with. The possibility of AI swarms when every drone, every robot, every integral system on the planet is connected will make a difference. And that could be hacked by terrorists, non-state actors. We will have to be vigilant and guard against this kind of scenario. Well, two other quick scenarios I would say to you that are going to be very critically important to our future. One is we need a new kind of climate science. You know, dealing with just the massive terabytes, the massive data, you could fill up 10 football fields full of data today and still not fully understand. Remember I said earlier, one of the key features about the new computing architecture that would drive AI is the ability to collapse time to be able to process and analyze and make decisions faster and better. Well, I would say we are on the edge of a massive development in artificial intelligence to be able to help us better deal with climate, understand climate, data, logistics, geography, the weather. Let me suggest to you that there is an AI dividend waiting for us. Whether we're talking about climate, whether we're talking about healthcare, whether we're talking about what's next for ending hunger. I believe our mission is to be able to use AI and shape AI to create a better future for all of us on the planet. For over the next 10 to 20 to 100 years, we can use AI as a design science to design a better future. But we've got to beware. We want to make sure at the same time we can control AI before AI controls us. And I believe we can do that. Thank you.